first set of the day. We're, we right. started a little bit late today, you know, we, we had a, uh, we unfortunately couldn't like get into the entrance. Sometimes uh, you need people in the bracket yeah, to get so a bracket. Yeah, so I took a hammer to the wall and I busted us in. So, you know, let's smash be free. So we got Omega fighting off against Courage. Omega representing the King Koopa, Bowser, fighting off against the hero of time, Link. This is gonna be a fun matchup to watch. Link, typically speaking, you know, he's gonna stay from the back. He's gonna try to put out the projectiles, but Bowser doesn't really care about that. In this game, you can just sort of forward air or walk mm. through a lot of projectile pressure. I mean, that's exactly what the match is gonna be going on. You see Courage already right out the gate, you know, trying to keep his distance from Bowser because he knows he's, he's in a bad zone when Bowser can punch him or get his little meaty claws on him. You know, he wants to go for those command grabs. He's gonna be able to go through the shield like that, so gotta be careful. Those claws are anything but little, man. You know as soon as Bowser mm -hmm. gets his hands in there, it's going to get messy. Lots of damage building up really quickly. We already see that. First minute of the game, everyone's getting into the red now. Although I do like that the Link's starting to pull out the bombs more, try to be a bit more passive, doesn't want to get too aggressive. And he's playing with the bombs, right? He's actually like kicking it a little bit, trying to like push that bomb towards his opponent. He can trigger it at any time. There he goes, catch the air dodge right in, connects the forward tilt, taking away that first stock courage up, three stocks to two. Bomb play is always my favorite part of watching Link. It's so creative because there's so many different angles the bomb mm. could come in. And Link already has decent enough disjoints and projectile like, mm. angles to cover space. So you're just covering that much more. Right. And you see Courage, you know, trying to apply some shield pressure against Omega. But Bowser's up. He had a shield is hella nice. you got to be careful. Try to, you, you know, he's got some range with that sword with the projectiles. You don't need to be around top of him. But you know what? Don't need any range right there. Just jump right at him. Give him a little bit of a head bunkaroo up to the top. Range don't matter when you can just slap hard. Yeah. That's the story of Bowser, though. Couple of good reads, few nice combos you got going on, and the damage builds just like that. My man's gonna double slap and try to land it five times in a row. Okay, we got flamethrower throwing it off there, some fire breath. There we go, up he had a shield again. We're gonna see that a lot, a lot, a lot from Omega. Anytime you see Courage miss spacing or oh, big punish. No upbeat for you. You're actually gonna get the grab. Koopa no longer in this game. You saw him a little bit hungry for that narrow. Was hoping he's gonna like fast fall air dodge right into it. It's hard to get those confirms now. Mm. But I feel like Bowser doesn't need to worry too much about that. Decent survivability from Omega's end to end. Fortunate what a trade. stock taken with the down air, so he's chilling with the lead. What a trade. What can I say, man? He, he just went for the down air. Courage was actually pushing buttons midair, so his nair came out. Wasn't able to clank with that. He got, he got the, the little sex kick there. Able to get some easy confirms off of it as well. Not, not the biggest ones, but just like a little tap to give him some stage control, pushing him back off stage. That's where he wants to capitalize against Omega. He wants to push Omega off stage. Try to just keep him out there. Don't let him get back on the stage. But we got the side B coming in. He actually hasn't done that this entire game. So it might be conditioning him into holding shield. There's going to be something to watch out for, especially off the platforms of PS2. And speaking of, both of these players have actually been playing to the stage really well. You see the way that the Link is able to sort of use the platforms as cover when he's trying to move to position for zoning. And then the Bows are constantly breaking away and just going with the flow of it. He's been maneuvering across the stage really well, constantly breaking off to the offstage play. But things get a little dicey here at the ledge. There you go. That was a great trap coming from uh, Courage. You saw him throw the boomerang, wait for it to come back, kind of nicked Omega right in the back of the head so I didn't get to confirm right afterwards. And honestly, there we go, catching the jump, has Courage off stage. This could be a potential edge guard, but that's the thing that Link can do off stage. He's got that immediate come back to center stage as soon as possible. It's so hard to like catch that trajectory because he goes so fast. He does. He comes flying in, man. Although, there is one thing to watch out for specifically in this matchup. Link's bomb does not play well with fire, so Fire Breath comes into play here. Courage might not have that as an option, depending yeah. on how well Omega can hold the ledge. Oh, he's dead. Good night. Yeah, I mean, I get why he went for the up B, you know, he saw Bowser coming up to him. He thought he felt a little bit uh, defensive there, just wanted to get, like, go for this quick burst move to just get Bowser off of him. But Bowser just, you know, Omega played patient. And honestly, I want to talk about what was going on in that match, right? Link was just not spacing his aerials correctly. He was landing down with Nair's very greedily, trying, because he was so desperate to like land so close, because if you land the Nair right on top of Bowser, it leads to some really great confirms, which is why he's going for it. So Omega was just like, okay, I'm going to hold shield, go for either an up, he had a shield, or just turn around, grab, or just grab you. And he got, that's where, I think that's where he ended up finding his victory, you know? Here's another good, great setup right there. It was the boomerang right from behind him, so he automatically had a free F tilt. Even if he was holding shield, because the boomerang is also applying some shield pressure, he had the chance to potentially shield poke, as well as just push him back and make him completely safe, because that was a really well-spaced forward tilt. It was indeed. With Link, there's, like, there's so many opportunities for you to change up how you want to pressure someone on shield, and then even at that, like assuming your pressure doesn't get blocked, then you're just dealing free damage. Like Link is able to put out numbers. Uh, curious to see where we're going to be going for game two. It looks Unova. like Nova and I really like this pick. So 
We what do you like about it, man? I like the fact it's it's a bit more of a condensed version of Stadium 2. It's a very similar layout. Okay. Very, very few differences as far as like the length of the platforms, the height of the platforms. But from a zoning perspective, you want a little bit more close in play because now Link specifically, he's able to control that space incredibly well with just Bomb and Boomerang. That doesn't take into account how well he pressures with his own normals, which we've seen a decent amount of or if he starts using Arrow, which is a not often seen tool. Well, he might not even go Link, because he's looking hovering over Pac-Man right oh. there as a counter pick, potentially. There it is. I mean, he's dressed up as as the hero for Breath of the Wild, man. So I would just assume that he would stick to his guns. But now we're going back to 1980 with some Bandai Namco. All right. And I'm busting out the old school pac attack. All right, so for what it's worth, Pac-Man can make use of the stage well for much the same reasons that Link can, although the play is, of course, a lot more dynamic because of how Bonus Fruit and Fire Hydrant love to play around the stage. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see a lot of just, like, like you said, very similar to Link, like you said, it's going to be a lot of projectile wars going on, but especially with Pac-Man, where he, like, relies completely upon that Bonus Fruit. It's all about trying to, like, find the right projectile for the job while also, you know, playing around that Hydrant. In this matchup, whoever has control of the Hydrant is the one in charge of the stage. Because Bowser can easily try to take that away from Pac-Man. I feel like another important feature is going to be who, like, who lets who land. Mm. Like, controlling the base platform is so important because if you're forcing Pac-Man to play the ledge and play the platforms, Bowser's able to control all that space super well. His ledge trap in game pretty solid against likes of Pac-Man, and his up tilt's able to reach on these platforms for Innova. So Omega's got plenty of options to keep Courage still on the ropes. Okay, well, I mean, if you're going to go for a risky down air from that high up, you know, Courage is going to go for a simple shield into a four smash. Inky making a scene. First stock going to Courage. TJ Courage. Don't forget his initials, Ooh, man. Of course. Got to let him know. Yeah, Thomas Jefferson Courage. <laughs> my man's presidential candidate. Oh, my God. Side B right on top of him just slams down onto the platform right above. That's what's actually going to be better. That's going to be a boon for Bowser, right? Whatever he connects that command grab. If he can easily land his opponent on the platform right above and just get a simple kill right yeah, afterwards. Man. You don't need to complicate things. You break zone on Pac-Man. He's not he doesn't have that mm. much on the ground to like break off of you. Mm. He's got to commit to being in the air, and then it's just easier for Bowser to hit you with something. Yeah. Now Omega's being overly aggressive right now, which he kinda has to do against Pac-Man, but I don't know about these down airs, champ. Like uh, he just like he's landing right on top of him. Very, like, tons of lag. There's not many moves in this game that have a lot of lag afterwards. Bowser's down air is one of them. Oh, yeah, he's big chilling as soon yeah. as he whiffs that. Yeah. Although I feel like that hasty play, it's it's, it's not hurting him, really. Like, Courage is He takes damage, but not, not too much. Yeah, Courage isn't taking full advantage of it. With Pac-Man, typically speaking, he could push out from one side of the stage to the other. That was a big punish. There's a little Oof. bit of a delay on that grab from Omega. You saw him going for the punish guy. Okay, we got, just got to go for the down B. Which is a good mix-up instead of going for the down air, I guess, because that has the ability to break shields. He might have been conditioning him into holding shields with the down air, potentially. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, throwing the cherry right on top of his head just to give him some uh, breathing room to get back onto the stage. Cherry is the fastest projectile he can like pull out of his arsenal because it's the first one. Up uh, tilt's going to catch that jump. So I just realized something really important for this particular match. What's up? I don't know if we're going to see it here in game two or maybe even in game three, but Bowser was able to run through the trampoline. Like, his dash didn't activate the trampoline while it was grounded. That could be big for Omega breaking zone on Courage, which he's going to have to start doing because he's still not able to take the stock. 136 and counting. Dead. But fast, big dead boy. Yeah, you get caught by that side B, the Koopa Claw coming out. Going to get that seismic toss. Okay, yep. trying to get the trying to get cheeky with these uh, power pellets. It's on CJ to try and bring this match back. Things have been like... A, it's been a slobber knocker through and through, but I feel like it, it really doesn't have to be. TJ can slow the pace of this match at any time with his projectiles, start to stave away the pressure with Nair and Fair, which are common tools to see from Pac-Man when he wants to get aggressive, but Courage hasn't been breaking those out yet. Well, speaking of pressure, you saw Courage, you know, every single time he's trying to, like, set up shop, Omega's right in his face, showing no fear, sitting at 185%. He doesn't mind getting right in front of, like, because honestly, if you have the lead, a lot of players try to, like, slow down the pace and, like, run away from the, you know, run away from the opponent just a little bit play a little bit more passive, but that's the opposite of what Omega's doing. He's just trying to tie on as much damage as possible. That was a free up tilt. Looks like he thought he was going to land right in front of him because he wanted to grab. He'd get a lot off that grab. Oh, how I about mean, that for a free grab? There you Another go. Another down I mean, air gets honest, punished right into the hands of Pac-Man. I mean, if you're going to spam down air like that, it's about time Courage tried a big punish, but it might be a hair too late, man. He's still ha he's on his last stock. Omega takes it. He's going to be sitting down in loser's bracket. Courage trying to fight to save his life. He's doing a good job of building up damage quickly, though, and trying to control center stage, I think, is the, the better approach here. 
especially because just like that, you see that command grab come through, and Bowser doesn't have enough time to actually get to the platforms. But uh, well, I mean, not enough space there either. Trampoline not bringing him back, and that's going to be a 2-0 for Omega. He recovered a little bit too low. Wasn't able to get up to the ledge in time. Usually in that situation, a lot of players will try to go down there and like mess up the third jump by, by catching it before Pac-Man can go for it. But in that case, first off, you're playing Bowser. Might be a little risky for him to go that deep because if he whiffs and he misses the trampoline, he's actually done for. Yeah. But on the same token, like Courage was recovering from way too low with that pack jump, so he just ended up not being able to get back to the stage. Omega just stood there to get the victory, you know? He threw out the flamethrower just in case, just to try to get some free damage, but you know what? That's going to be all she wrote. That's Omega moving on with a 2-0 victory over TJ Courage, man. Now, it, it breaks my heart to see it because I feel like in that situation, Courage could have came by. Oh, yeah. Pac-Man has a wall jump, and... One of the good things about picking into mm. Nova is the fact that it has those pillars. Mind you, you know they, they look uneven, but they're still mm. geometries you can jump off of. He might have just gotten a little bit too hasty by by just committing to the up B immediately when he could, could have gone for the wall jump, you know? That's where I think the worry is. Might, might have been some panic, might have been some nerves. You know, like this is like a round one match, you know? So right. some of these players playing on stream might be for the first time on like this type of a big of a stage because, you know, there is an audience. That's what I, And honestly, that's one of my favorite things about con tournaments, right? When you There's have 